Hello everyone at Product School. I'm Sandesh, uh, your host for today. I work at Amazon as Senior Product Manager Technical uh, at London. Before we start, uh, just a standard disclaimer. The information shared in the session are my personal opinions, my current are my past employers are not responsible for any content or opinions expressed. Also, the examples used are for illustration purpose. Uh, I don't endorse them. So the topic for today is customer experience versus security. As a product manager, on an everyday basis, you face this dilemma on how to provide a superior customer experience at the same time providing a sound security. So let's dive into this topic today. Now, uh, before we actually jump into the topic, a little bit about me. You might be wondering, who is this guy and why should I listen to you? Fair question. Uh, so a bit about me. Uh, I used to love trigonometry or mathematics in my school. So I would describe myself uh, someone who transitioned from a, a, a rectangle to a square, uh, to a circle, to a square. So how it how uh, this is how it is. So I graduated as a computer science engineer started a career as a UX designer, and then transitioned to a product manager post my MBA. And I was lucky enough to travel uh, between these three figures at the same time, between different continents, from Asia to Middle East to Europe. Uh, if you're keen to know uh, more about me, you can follow me on LinkedIn or Connect, and we can have a chat. Coming back to the topic for today, uh, which is customer experience versus security. So the, the, uh, the main problem occurs because there is a difference of expectations between both of the parties here, which is uh, a product manager and uh, in, an infosec team for a, a company. So for a product manager, the user expectations are there should be a seamless one-touch access across all platforms. There should be simple sign-up process. There, there should be some personalized offers. The list is just endless that have it for any applications, any device, or anywhere access. If it, uh, At the same time, what does an information security team uh, expect? They expect that the information security criteria are made. There are additional due diligence for user sign-up journey for banks, for example. The data is compliant for, for example, GDPR or privacy. There are enough mechanisms on identity management, device, user, and application. So if you see, the difference of expectation is quite clear. So what I try to do is I put this into a two-by-two two matrix of uh, a, a CX versus security, and then putting it across as good and bad or low or high across four quadrants. So if you're a, uh, if I'm starting from the bottom left quadrant, if you're a bad CX and low security, everyone suffers. There is just pain, which is followed by another pain. For example, using the default passwords to log in the app, no system checks. We will get into the examples more into the following slides. Uh, similarly, if you provide uh, a good CX um, plus low security or a bad CX plus high security, uh, the chances are you may not hit that sweet spot, which will touch eventually how to ach achieve that sweet spot of good CX plus high security. Uh, essentially, living there is what every product manager aspires to be. So let's go into one by one. So the first example is bad CX plus uh, uh, low security. So I have an example from back home. Uh, the old IRCTC website in early 2000s had a complex ticket, booketing, uh, ticket booking flow, which was difficult to navigate. So a typical user journey at that time was 
user had to select a QuickBook checkbox, but when customer went to the login page, there was no QuickBook button. So once user discovered this, the booking journey had a short time off. So there, though there was a limit on number of tickets you can book through website, there was no check on the username and password via email verification. So the consequences for this were customer journey was broken, which was difficult to navigate and complex. And because of the bad CX, people preferred booking uh, tickets via kiosks or from the ticket vendors, despite having an online website. Also, the no very no email verification or user registration mean data was prone for hacking and abuse by fraudsters. Uh, so th this I'm talking about the early 2000s. If you see the website today is is a superior website, which is much cleaner. But this is just an example of uh, when the Internet era arrived in uh, India, how the website were there. Coming to the next example, which is a, a good CX plus low security. Uh, so essentially no check on passwords. So here, most of the web, web, web application don't use a password strength check while setting up the accounts. This used to be a common case, I would say maybe five to 10 years back. Uh, nowadays, uh, most of the good web applications do have this password check. But how the user journey used to be, if you haven't seen those, that user can create the account by setting any password because there is no check. Users can set the easiest password just to complete the registration. Uh, users love this as this is an easier step uh, for them to create password. Although no checks for password creation is a good CS, passwords are prone for hacking. So the screenshot below is the worst passwords of 2020, most used passwords at the apps or website and corresponding number of users and time to crack it. If you see the list is a no brainer, like the numerical, the subsequent numerical, like one, two, three, four, five, six, or using password as the password is like the easiest to crack is just less than a second. Moving on. So this one is uh, bad CX and high security. So this is something uh, which apparently Google faced for a device controller app. So this was an app uh, which enabled device management for credit providers in Kenya. So if if you haven't heard about this app, uh, just uh, uh, let me walk you through the user journey here. Users can buy Google Android Go smartphones in installments with a telecom provider. If they don't pay their EMI for a month, the device will be locked. A credit provider can remotely restrict access to Android device if you don't make payments. If Android device is restricted, basic functionalities such as emergency calling and access to settings will still be available. So what happened was users were frustrated with the experience when the device was locked as they weren't told explicitly about this configuration that if you don't pay their EMI, uh, your device will be locked. So this app was kind of a very strange avenue for Google. It was additionally strange that this app was hidden away on the Play Store, separated from the rest of the Google LLC product. And user didn't like that and had since then questioned. So I pasted a few of these screenshots uh, which you can see on the page. The app is no longer available, but then this was kind of a strange move by a company. Now the next one is on bad CX plus high security. Um, and the example is OTP overkill. So, Initially, uh, when one-time password, when they were introduced, it was a novel idea for critical financial transactions. But over the time, it has been used for all the transactions for most of the banking. So the typical journey, most of us had seen this. User logs into the account using password. Authentication code is sent to the user's mobile phone and user enters the OTP and granted the access to online account. But this OTP overkill is making users frustrated because for every uh, transaction, 
especially if you are traveling and don't have access to network or in roaming, it becomes a nuisance and causes a lot of frustration for users. So it should be used judiciously for critical financial transactions alone. Now, how do you achieve from no security to perfect security? Essentially, as a PM, you need customers should buy your product so that you become a happy PM. But, uh, and the security team also wants uh, their demands are satisfied. Essentially, a happy infosec team. So a sweet spot of overlap provides you minimum viable security plus optimal customer experience. And uh, it's not like if you do that, you will not get the competitive business ad advantage. In fact, uh, organizations or enterprises or the entire ecosystem has leverage this competitive ad business advantage and we will see that in the subsequent slides. The first one is uh, good CX plus high security at a grocery store or commerce. Uh, so this is uh, from somewhere close from my home, uh, Tesco Getco. So this is open in London, UK and like traditional shops, there are no registers or cashiers. No need to wait in line and you can just walk in and pick out what you want. You just have to sign in using your Tesco account once before entering the store. And in case you prefer, you can always go to the cashier. So I have a short video. Just see this. Just have a quick look. Since the launch of our first Getco store in High Holborn, we've listened to lots of feedback and we've taken lots of learnings. So I'm really excited to share with you today our new hybrid shopping experience in Fulham Reach, where customers can choose to pay using the app or through the checkouts in the store. Here's how it works. To try our new frictionless technology, simply open the Tesco Groceries app, select Get Go from the settings section of your profile page and check your payment details are up to date. We anonymously track the items you select using specialist technology from Freego that monitors the movements as you walk around the store. We don't store any customer images or data, but assign a unique ID to you as you enter the store. You can also shop with friends and family by simply scanning them in on your app, and then you choose to use a self-scan checkout where a colleague will always be on hand to help, or by simply scanning your app as you exit the store. So, uh... I would suggest if you're in London, just to go out and check this out. This is really cool. And this hybrid store was opened recently. You should definitely check it out. And other organizations have also replicated similar uh, setups in their respective journeys. Coming from a fintech or a banking background, uh, this is something which always gets debated that how do you achieve a superior customer experience and high security? So this is a classic example of uh, video, video KYC at N26, which is a German challenger bank. Uh, the customer can download the app and complete the registration. The cool thing about it is, is for ID verification, uh, if you're address is outside Germany. And the ID verification is done by taking a selfie and photo of your ID through app. And if your address is in Germany, uh, you can do it through an in-app video by pairing a smartphone with your account. This is an innovative way of doing ID verification, which is secure and a great customer experience. In fact, uh, N26 was one of the first one to start this way, but nowadays, most of the challenger banks or new banks in different parts of the world have adapted this feature since then. The next example is at a regulator level. So we saw e-commerce, uh, we saw at a bank. Now, how it's achieved at a regulator level. So I have an example. If you're from a fintech or a banking background, you must have heard this term 3D secure too which is prior to 2020 uh, for an e-commerce journey through credit card required information such as credit card number, expired date, and a one-time verification code. But uh, the framework uh, 
introduced by EU's revised payment service directive mandated the customers making purchase online to provide more information like in the form of a passcode or a fingerprint or a face ID. So this provided customers a strong customer authentication uh, depending on the devices they have. As the change is implemented, not just at merchants level, but at bank and the payment service provider level. So this gave an additional security, secure layer to customers and they were no longer worried about that whether their transaction is unsecure or not. Moving to the last example, which is at an ecosystem level. Uh, so this is something where I used to live previously uh, from Dubai, uh, the Dubai airport customer experience. Like uh, a few months back, uh, Dubai airport recently started testing iris scan, which is like contact lens technology, eliminating the need for any human interaction when entering or leaving the stern, uh, uh, this leaving the airport to control the spread of the COVID-19. Previously, uh, so the user journey before check-in was uh, scan your passport details page or your uh, your Emirates ID, which is like a social security number, look into the camera and wait for OK on the screen and gate opens. And now the user journey after check-in is instead of a manual check for paper tickets or phone apps now you can look into the camera wait for ok and gate opens proceed for flight boarding so the entire process is now seamless and take literally five to six seconds at each leg if if now covid has uh, beyond us so you must have been traveling a lot uh, but this airport experience of uh, border control and uh, going to the gates is always painful so this was something a novel experience which was done by Dubai Airport. So the takeaways from today's session is like the expectations of a customer and a security team are always at loggerheads, be it a physical product, physical product or a pure play digital product. But businesses that provide a minimum viable security and optimum customer experience are building a strong competitive advantage against peers. Uh, we just saw it for uh, different players like e-commerce or and uh, for a bank or a regulator or an entire ecosystem as complex as an airport. There can't be a one size fits for all solution while building a great experience at the expense of high security and to borrow uh, the famous cartoon one size fits all if you try to combine all running hiking climbing and cycling all in one you'll get something like a complex shoes which no one will wear but uh, that's what everyone tries to do uh, to hit the sweet spot but uh, you need that optimum balance between uh, the customer service expectations and the security team that's from my side. Have a great day.